What's up YouTube? Dougie Chong here. Welcome to today's episode where I'll be showing you how you can set up your very own mining rig. I'm really excited for this YouTube video because making mining rigs was what started this whole YouTube channel. Of course, now I cover more mainstream investments, so those original crypto videos are on my original channel. Please like and subscribe. If you want to see that original channel, maybe I'll share at a thousand subscribers. But basically now in 2021, now that cryptocurrencies are more widely accepted as an investment vehicle, you can buy it on things like PayPal and Square, I decided to remake this how to make a mining rig video. And for those of you that do not know what cryptocurrencies are, just think of them as digital money that no one entity really controls. This video will be from a very beginner point of view. When I first started making mining rigs, I had no experience. I had never even built a regular computer at all. Back then, if I wanted to buy a computer, I'd look at like Best Buy and things like RAM just meant, do you ever get eight gigs or do you get four gigs? I didn't really know what the parts were. I kind of knew what a CPU was what a graphics card was and that's about it all right let's get straight into the build here i really hope the audio turns out i just have the microphone kind of perched on top of my camera right here but we'll go over just the general parts that you'll need to build your mining rig i've taken apart all the individual pieces the only thing i'm gonna leave on is this this is the cpu fan and underneath is a cpu and you just kind of put in the slot fairly straightforward but the fans just a little tricky to get off I kind of hate taking them off so I'm just gonna leave that on there right now but this is the box for that motherboard it's a uh, h110me the thing with motherboards you have to see things support different things uh, most graphics cards will work with other motherboards but motherboards only support certain CPU types so if you can see right here on the box it says there's support for LGA 1151. So when you go to look for a CPU that's compatible with this motherboard, you just need to find that it's LGA 1151. And that just means it's an Intel type. There's two main types. You can either get AMD CPUs or you can get Intel ones. Intel ones typically have the cheaper ones. AMD has higher performance ones if you want kind of CPU mining as well. On the topic of motherboards, you typically want one with more PCIe slots. These slots are where the graphics cards will be plugged in. This board only has three. A lot of boards you'll find can have six and some even 12. I don't really recommend putting 12 graphics cards on one rig because while that does optimize the rig, something's bound to break on it. Maybe a riser or a graphics card might start overheating. And when one card goes down, the whole rig is basically off. I recommend sticking to around eight or nine GPUs per mining rig. The next thing you'll need is a piece of RAM. You typically won't need more than four gigabytes of RAM. Some people recommend putting eight gigs if you're running more than about eight different cards, but I've been pretty okay with just four gigs for most of my rigs. You do have to look at the type. This is DDR4 RAM. It'll say on the motherboard whether it's compatible with this type of RAM. I believe DDR5 RAM is coming out and DDR3 RAM is less expensive, but it'll be harder to find a CPU. So it's a really uh, interesting price optimization, trying to find the cheapest CPU, the cheapest motherboard, and the cheapest piece of RAM. Because at the end of the day, all, all these pieces just needs to work reliably. They don't really add to the performance of the rig. The GPU is gonna be what matters. So on that topic, you'll need at least one GPU or a graphics card. This is a Sapphire Pulse. RX 570, you're gonna find that graphics cards right now are gonna be pretty much impossible to find. Miners have bought them up and the prices have just skyrocketed. Like with any investment, try not to overpay for a card. This card retails maybe for 150 and it typically sells on Amazon like $300 right now. That is if you can find it. The RX 5700, I've seen markups up to like $1,000 now when that card should be in that $500 range or even a bit less. I'll also mention that if you want to mine Ethereum, you should be getting the eight gigabyte cards. This is a four gigabyte card now, and they're technically supposed to be obsolete, but some miners have made some interesting software to increase the life a little bit longer. 
And of course, for those of you that don't know, Ethereum is trying to go to a proof of stake algorithm, which means mining will be obsolete, but that won't happen for at least another year. So when it comes to graphics card compatibility with motherboards, it's not as important as CPUs and RAMs. Most graphics cards will work with most motherboards, even 10, 20 year old motherboards. Some might occasionally not. Just try to get a more current motherboard. Then you'll need a riser or multiple risers. You'll need one per GPU. This attaches the motherboard to the graphics card. These are pretty cheap, around five or $10. I have a lot extra in the Toronto area if you need one. And then this piece is optional. It's called a PCIe splitter. It basically plugs in here and then it splits that one PCI port into four. So my idea with this one was to put three splitters in and then I can get 12 cards. I don't think it exactly worked, but the thing is you kind of want to reduce parts. You don't want to have so many parts, different things can go wrong. So I wouldn't recommend doing this really. Next, of course, you'll need a power supply. This is a Rosewill Gold 750 watt power supply. When it comes to power supplies, there's about three different ratings. There's platinum, gold, silver, okay, and there's also bronze. This talks about the efficiency of the power supply. If you want the absolute best efficiency, platinum is the way to go. But I think for most people, gold is all right. The price jump from gold to platinum is pretty big. Each graphics card will tell you about how much power they approximately draw. An RX 570 is about 100 watts, and then CPU's whole setup is about 150 maybe. Next, you'll need a hard drive of some sort. If you're planning on using Windows, you pretty much need an SSD, something big. This one's about 60 gigabytes. That'll do for this purpose. I really recommend using simplemining.net. I'll leave a link in the description below. That is really what I use. And all you need is an eight gigabyte USB stick and you flash the OS on there. I really recommend using a reputable brand, a more reliable USB. These things actually break pretty easily and then your whole rig goes down and it's hard to debug exactly what's wrong because you just won't see any signal. So I'd recommend using something like Kingston and even going above the minimum eight gigs, this is a 16 gigabyte USB stick. But of course, SSDs are the more reliable option, but this is maybe 60 bucks compared to 10 or 15 for a USB stick. You'll also need to have an ethernet connection to use SimpleNet mining. I'll see if I can get it working on Wi-Fi and find a Windows miner. All right, the first step, you could hook up some of the wires, but I'm just gonna hook up some of the components. I think you're supposed to hook them up first anyways. But RAM really just fits in one way. You line it up and then you stick it in. You should hear a click and that's it. Next, we'll take out the riser. You could just plug the graphics card directly into the motherboard for the most part. But if you have a lot of graphics cards, you're gonna wanna use these risers. Basically, you just plug the card in like that. Sometimes you gotta slide this little lever out. Let's plug in the parts first, actually. Need your USB connector. And then this is what powers the riser. Then you look on your power supply. You should have something labeled like PCIe. That goes into the graphics card. And then if you have something called SATA, that connects to the riser connection. Pretty simple, things only fit one way, so it's gonna be hard to really put something wrong in. I really like the process of just building a computer out, so even if they didn't mine cryptocurrencies, I really enjoyed this process. And then you take the other end of the USB cable, put it in just like that. Boom. Let's zoom this out a bit maybe. So 
So that's the graphics card. Just make sure nothing's in the way of the fans and you should be okay. Next, we'll find the power to the CPU. It's usually a little square thing. I think it's right here. This is the CPU power, if you can see where my thumb is. And then this is the motherboard power. These are really the two main things. It might look really confusing over here, but those are really all you really need. That, that, power, and some hard drive connection. So here it is, this is the CPU one. It's not really labeled CPU, but I guess I can just tell. The pins only line up one way, so make sure you put it in the right way. Next, we'll get the main power supply to the motherboard. I'll mention that I did blow up a power supply once. It didn't really blow up, just a capacitor went out. There are these things called self-starters that you can put in to just turn on the power supply. But apparently it's different from brand to brand, and so it did not work with an EVGA one. Overall, I do like EVGA's quality though. I would recommend them over Rosewill, it's just that Rosewill was cheaper. And boom, there we go. We're almost there. We got CPU in, we got motherboard in, we got our RAM in place, GPU here. Next, we'll connect the SSD. So for this, you can usually connect it to any one of the SATA ports, they're called. I'll just plug it into this one right here. Goes in one end. Again, the connection is like an L. It can only go in one way. But here you put in here. And then the same kind of connector that you use for the riser, you can use for the hard drive. And boom, I think we're about ready to go. I'll also just plug in a monitor and Bluetooth USB. And now I'll just turn the power supply on. One is for on, zero is for off. Most of the time it won't turn on right away. This kind of scared me at first. I thought, what did I do wrong? You actually would need to turn it on from there. I changed a motherboard setting that makes it turn on as soon as it puts power on. And I do recommend turning that on if you're setting up mining rigs. But basically you just need to touch two of the pins here. I would really recommend you look through your motherboard manual to find out the exact pins. You touch them together with a screwdriver or something metal and it'll turn your motherboard on. All right, so next you're gonna have to download a miner. Again, if you use Simple Miner, it'll already have all these miners updated and installed for you. But we're gonna use Team Red Miner here. We download the Windows to save time. I've already downloaded it. And then you go, you extract the location. And then the thing that I found annoying, you don't actually have a config file. You have to put in your cryptocurrency, then your wallet. Yes, this is my real Ethereum wallet. If you want to donate to me, send to this address. Then you type in a worker name, and then you can generate a command here. It'd be really useful if they just had a config file and then you click the miner and then you can run. You're gonna to want to change this to the pool that you actually want to use. I typically use nano pool. Then you just open up command prompt, run as administrator. You navigate to that folder that you went to. You do CD that folder name, then you're in that folder. Uh, and then I had that final command here saved. So I just copy that command, put it into the command prompt. Just like that, it should be mining. You see something like that on your command prompt. If it can't find your graphics card, it's gonna be another issue. I guess I also skipped, you have to install drivers for your graphics card before this will work. And the other thing you should do is flash your BIOS. This will increase your mining ability. But just like that, it outputs some stats. You can see it's mining at about 21 mega hash per second. 
That's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Leave a like if this video helped you at all. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you in the next video.